How are we doing, people? Thanks for watching. It's Beer Monster O'Clock. And uh, I've been to Home Bargains again, you know me, and uh, there's a new beer in there, and German beer that's dropped, so of course I'm going to have to give it a review, you know, me and my German beers. Uh, it goes by the name Konig's Gold Lager. There's a look at your can, look at that one. Very interesting, you've got like an eagle on top there. Um, it says on the front of the can, it's brewed by the German Purity Law, 4.8% lager, 500ml can. It's to set you back £1.39 pence in home bargains. So, you know, if the beer's, if it's a decent German beer, it's a no-brainer, really, isn't it? Um, I couldn't find out any information about the brewery. I've never heard of this one myself. I don't remember seeing it on Beers Europe or anything like that. A very random uh, drop, shall we say. Let's see if it's nice and, uh, you know, he's going to be like, they sell stuff like Dab and that in Home Bargains, which is a cracking little German beer for roughly the same sort of price as this. Um, if you buy the cans in a four pack anyway. All right, let's uh, get a poured. Let me know if you picked this one up from Home Bargains, guys, in the comments, and uh, whether you enjoyed it or not, or do you intend on picking it up? I mean, it's a German beer. All right. There we have it. It's a very pow looking lager. Here's a close up look of the beverage. Uh, medium levels of carbonation, quite slow moving, medium sized bubbles, um, very piercingly white head on that. As you can see, the bubbles are kind of like slightly loose. It doesn't look too bad. Let's get the news in there and check out. The rim is, what's the name again? Konig's Gold Lager. Very, very, very faint aroma. In fact, I'm not getting hardly anything off that. Very, very subtle, malty note. Gives off a bit of sweetness as well, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't smell anything special, but it's a lager, you know. As I say, they don't smell up bloody much, do they? It's all about the taste. Is it wet and refreshing? And then <laughs> let's chuck her down the neck and see if I think it's worth a buy. Cheers, everybody. Bye. Oh. Interesting. There again. Light bodied. Very clean, very clean tasting lager. There's a malty start to it, like bready malts, almost like a slight sweetness, like almost like a, just a hint of like a honeyed kind of sweetness to it, but not in a bad way. Carbonation's quite heavy. It's really, <clears throat> I mean, it's really coming. <laughs> the carbonation's really sort of trying to force its way back up. But it's it's got a very unique end kind of finish to this beer. Almost Pilsner-esque like finish to it. Mmm. Yeah, it's quite a lingerer. It's right, well, you get the sort of malts at the start, the sweet malts. It goes a little bit blank in the middle, but in the end, it's really quite something. I don't think it'd be for everyone, like, it's, um, I'm still can't quite make my mind where I'm at with the beer. This is why I've gone a bit quiet. Um, 
but it's unique. I'll give you that. Uh, it doesn't just taste like every other lager. It's got its own sort of thing going on uh, on the finish. It's quite floral, actually. It, and it's got a long... It's got a bitterness, but it's like a really long floral kind of aftertaste after that bitterness. And it do, it just sort of lingers on. And I can't work out at the minute whether it's annoying or it's very Moorish. <laughs> <coughs> But it's definitely not horrible, that's for sure. Um, hmm. I think I like it. I do think I like it. It reminds me a bit of Hack Beck, which you can get on the on the beer machines on the Perfect Draft. It's got like kind of a a lingering bitter finish that's I think it's going to be a grower I really do first mouth I was like mm, couldn't just couldn't decide when in again the more I'm having I'm really starting to enjoy that unique aftertaste to the beer uh, it's really difficult to describe it because um I don't know I think I'm pretty sure it's like a floral thing going on with it Mm. And it really does linger. It's kind of, it's not like a pills in a bite, but it's like stinging nettles, like a stinging nettle and floral kind of weedy taste that kind of lingers on the taste buds. It really does. And then when you go in there again, it kind of resets it. It, it tends to get more powerful after each mouthful, that linger, because it's just sort of reinforcing it. Each time we go in, it's not quite gone away after I've took my other sip, next sip, if you know what I mean. It's a, it's a difficult bit to explain, but I like it. It's, I mean, it's not the best German beer I've had, uh, but what I like about it is it's doing something different. It's, it's one I think you're going to, love or hate. I honestly think some people are going to absolutely love this and some people are going to hate it for the same reason that the other half liked it. It's, I definitely think that finish is unique and it's probably too intense for some who just want something slammable and perhaps not too overly leery on the end. But I do like my lagers have a bit in this. And I don't mind them having a bit of a linger. I'll enjoy that. I just... <laughs> I'd buy it again. I mean, that's the main thing. Would I buy it again? Yeah, I think I would if I fancy something with a little bit of a lager with a little bit of something about it. I still can't make my mind up how much I like it. It's a very strange beer. I don't know what to score it. It's like, I like it, but do I love it? Like, do I really like it, or do I just like it? <laughs> I can't make up my mind up on this one. I really can't. Freaking hell. Uh, just drink more beer, you'll make your mind up, you schlag. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Perhaps it could get a bit intense, that aftertaste after a few cans I like it though I do like it I don't know how I'd feel after a few cans it could become annoying but I, you know what I've gone to in my my head it just gets going whoop. there's a part of me that's like a 7 out of 10 and there's a part of me that's like this deserves a bell and I just can't <laughs> I just can't work out where I'm at um, <sighs> I'd be a shit review, really, isn't it? <laughs> I say, what? I'll go eight. <laughs> I just, 
I feel like it's one that I need to have a few cans of to really fully make me wind up. It's a very interesting beer. And it really does do something on the end there, which is very floral and it's, like I say, stinging nettles, weedy like taste to it. But I feel like I shouldn't like, but I do. And I think that's the problem I'm having. We'll just give it an eight, I suppose. <laughs> Thanks, people. Do let me know if you tried it, what you think, because I'll be really interested. And I'm definitely going to pick up a few more cans of this to try and fully make up my mind and see whether it becomes annoying. Because now the beer's finished, I am a bit gutted. Because I was enjoying kind of sussing it out, if you like. But it says something. It's, it's, for me, it's 100% one to pick up and try. You might hate it, though. <laughs> but... It's going to be an interesting beer, nevertheless, to try. It's something a bit different, which for me is a good thing anyway. I'd get it again. I might have to session on it one day and see how it goes. Anyway, thanks for watching, people. Sorry, sort of dragged on a bit of me talking a load of old crap. But uh, these things happen, don't they? Uh, take care, people. To the next one. Bye-bye, darlings. Bush.